Cancel Court is an improv comedy show. Some opinions and statements are exaggerated for entertainment purposes. The views expressed on Cancel Court are solely those of the individuals providing them and do not reflect the opinions of Defiant Digital or their respective affiliates or employees. Basically, we're going to piss a lot of people off, but f*** it. Cancel Court with Judge Tony Towns. In this episode, the trial of rap culture. Not man I've been shot. To, there are times <laughs> when you need someone. And now let's go to the courtroom. In this quarter, he's back. This time with a goddamn lineup. Welcome back, Ron Taylor. And in this quarter, giving all the vibes of a high school hall monitor. Welcome back, Doughboy. Come to order. Cancel Court is now in session with Judge Tony Towns. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin, I would just like to give a big shout out and a thank you for your arrival, our Miss Ariel J. Her birthday was this weekend and she was too lit to make it to our other cases. So thank you for being here today. We'll talk about the party afterwards. We are here today to determine if rap culture should be shut down until further notice. There's been a slew of incidents, deaths, and crimes that have caused many to question the viability of rap culture. For some, this is a very sensitive topic, a hot button issue, and there's no better place to handle this responsibility other than the council court. With that being said, we have Mr. Ron Taylor, AKA Ron T, representing the prosecution. Mr. Taylor, I see you're back in my courtroom today. Uh, last time you were here, I believe you were on a show called Funny Advice, where you talked about for the entire year of 2020, you were popping Molly and eating ass. All of 2020, I was doing Molly and eating ass. Brother, I ain't got to fuck no more. I believe more. you. No more. I believe you, King. Have you found Christ since that moment? Well, you know, Judge, I'll have you know that uh, I thought that that was a storytelling show. So, yeah, no, I didn't do any of that. I always knew the Lord. I know the Lord right now, and he is with me. He is my shepherd, that is right, and he will shepherd me away from this courtroom if you say anything else about me eating ass and doing Molly. Because I tell you, it was good. <laughs> In my imagination, though. Uh -oh. In my imagination. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Representing the defense, we have Mr. Anthony Belcher Jr., a.k.a. Doughboy. Mr. Doughboy, welcome back to the courtroom. What up, fam? When you were previously here, you literally were working so hard to defend Drake, you sweated out of your suit. Any other questions on me? Thank you, Mr. Doughboy. Can I take this jacket off, man? Yes, you can. <laughs> you look like you suffer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Will you be having that problem today? Um, I would uh, have you know I've been in the gym uh, okay. since the last time we were, you know, we were here. Okay. Um, you know, I'm, I've lost about uh, two to three pounds since then. I'm feeling good. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think I'll have too much sweat. I've been up on my cardio, and I'm ready to run laps around this BS prosecution. So let's get it going. Wow. All right, let's go. Two to three pounds. What did you do, take a shit? <laughs> 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 Mr. Doughboy, we're proud of you and the work that you're doing thank to you, better your you. life. I appreciate it. I wish more black people would do the same I'm thing. I'm trying to get there. No thank problem. You. Mr. Taylor, cut the molly out and do some running, sir. Hey, listen, wait oh, a minute. He on mean. the toilet with a headband on, <laughs> listening to Rocky. Objection, objection. I shall not get roasted by a man popping molly and eating ass during the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> thank you. You got shit on your breath. <laughs> I see this case is going to get a little shaky. Both sides will have two minutes of opening statements. Then you will present factual evidence to the jury. Each attorney will be giving two rebuttals. We will end with two minutes of closing arguments. Once all evidence is presented, the jury appears without bias, will decide the fate of rap culture based on the evidence and the presentation given by the lawyers with a clear and decisive judgment. Are we clear, jury? Yes, sir. Thank you. We will begin with the prosecution. Mr. Ron T, please proceed with your opening statement. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I'm here to put on trial and uh, pretty much eradicate rap culture. Very important thing to distinguish today is rap culture, not rap. 
with rap culture. Culture! That has to do with what you do and how you do it and why you do it. You can rap all day. You can rap about Pop-Tarts and, and, and Popsicles and Bicycles and all type of things. That's what you do, right? But culture is why you do it. As we all very well know, rap culture is littered with a bunch of atrocious things that are very detrimental to not just black people and black culture, but people as a whole. Again, we're talking about rap culture, the culture that says, hey, yeah, go to the strip club, throw money. We're talking about the culture that says, hey, yeah, you know your friend, shoot that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Tell about the culture that says, yeah, yo man, he got a nice girl, fuck that bitch. <laughs> That's the culture that we're talking about right now. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of different cultures that we don't address and because we inflate them or conflate them with what the actual thing is. This might be a difficult thing or a touchy subject to think about, but when you talk about gay culture, right? Especially when you talk about men who are feminine, if you will. That's fine, that's beautiful. Do your thing. But when you have men who embody the worst qualities of women, that's a fucking problem. Okay, I wanna see more gay men who embody themselves like Michelle Obama. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, where are all the gay niggas? Pause, pause. No pause, <laughs> straight though. <laughs> Fast forward, if you will. Where's all the gay niggas that's like Erica Badu? Huh? Where's that at on Love and Hip Hop? I don't need to see all of these gay dudes who embody the worst qualities of women. We all got bad qualities. And it ain't just the men. It's the women that want to be like men as well. I don't need to see no gangster ass lady. <laughs> What's up, nigga? Uh, young, gentle bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the culture do you want to represent? I know a lot of guys, and I don't fuck with none of them that come up to me. Stop it. Let's go get ice cream. We don't need to slide on no niggas tonight. Pull your pants up, your booty fat. <laughs> 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 I said, your booty fat. Pause. I already told you we don't go. Don't say that no more. I said, your booty fat, pull your pants up. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to get at in all of this and what I will explain unequivocally, I think I used that word you right, did. unequivocally, <laughs> is that rap culture needs to be stopped, canceled, and overhauled. I'm tired of people dying. I'm tired of people being killed. I'm tired of the worst things that come from what we call rap and black culture, not only being promoted, right, but being rewarded. It's one thing to glorify things. It's another thing to be rewarded for that glorification. Don't give nobody a million dollars for killing a nigga. Don't give nobody a, a shoe deal, a TV show for being a ratchet ass bitch. <laughs> we don't need that. So today, I will show you that we need to absolutely cancel rap culture. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Ron T, for that powerful opening. Mr. Doughboy, please proceed with your opening statement. <sighs> Mm. You, you okay? Slippery slope. We're, we're oh. slippery slope. Okay. Okay. How you doing, man? Great. You're looking great. How you doing? I'm sir? doing great, sir. Thank you. Good to see you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, everybody doing okay? Okay. Before I even start, I would like to disabar. Did I use that word right? Disabar? It's new, but you can okay. use it. Can we disabar everything this nigga just said? Okay. okay. And the reason why is because I cannot, in good faith, and neither should you, in 2022, be listening to a nigga with a hairstyle from the 70s. We cannot listen to this man. He has an afro. He is stuck off in the parliament days when niggas was doing this with the guitars and dancing. That's the type of music this man wants to listen to, but that's not the world that we live in in 2022. And what I heard from Brother Juan 
was just a lot of finger pointing at hip hop. The culture, the culture is doing this and the culture is making people bad, all these other things. No, rappers aren't killing people. The streets is killing people. We gotta look at the problem. You can't blame the rapper for how the world is. The rapper is the reporter of the streets. There are a ton of rappers that have become billionaires. What other, what other musical genre can we talk about where they're making self-made millionaires and they're taking their hard struggle stories and they're talking about it? Remember back in the day, what would your mother say if you get into a conflict with somebody else and you were trying to fight somebody? What would they tell you? Use your words. That's what MCs are doing. They're using their words. Why is it that when rappers use words and say what they say, you want to attack the culture, they're doing all of this other stuff. But when Goodfellas comes out or a gangster movie, we go watch that shit, right? We go watch gangster movies. But the same thing cannot be held for rap music. We want to blame rappers for the way the world is. I'm going to show you why it is good for the ecosystem of the world. So the prosecution would like to have you believe that stripping culture is bad. I believe that stripping culture empowers women. Am I right? If a woman has a beautiful body, she should be able to go out there and show other people her beautiful body and share that beautiful body with other people. And as a man, if we want to go out there and tip her and throw a few dollars at her, that is a wonderful, hey, amen? Amen, I'm going after the club. After this, I'm going to the strip club, amen? Like, so, so I don't want to hear people talk. And when you talk about the violence, no, it's not the rappers. What about I your daughter, nigga? <laughs> I'm glad that you brought that up. I have a 17-year-old daughter. But you know what I'm saying? I raised my daughter to know the difference of what you're dealing with. Like, I tell my daughter, that's just, it's just like a movie. This is just entertainment. Haven't you guys ever heard the words for entertainment purposes only? I'm going to strip away the literal preachers because now they're starting to use rappers' lyrics against them. This is all fuckery, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. So by the time we get out of here, I'm going to let everybody in this room know why hip-hop cannot ever go away. I rest my case until the second round. More of Doughboy tricking off when Cancel Court returns. Cancel Court basically brings all of the issues that we fight about on Twitter onto a show where we can actually get a debate. It provides a space for things that are oftentimes talked about and argued on social media and in barbershops, and it puts it somewhere where it can be lighthearted, yet still have some of those important views talked about out loud. What separates Cancel Court from other shows is the fact that they give both sides of the story. The improv part is just really fun, and I think it opens up for a multitude of different creative explosions and surprises. You all do a wonderful job cutting it and editing it and stuff like that. Anytime you lean into improv, it is 100% who you cast. Improv can go 100% the way you want it to go and 1000% the way you do not want it to go. The fact that we're just up there saying our thoughts without any type of predetermined script Shout out to Defiant Digital for even letting us do that, because that is, uh, that's risky. <laughs> Reading the comments and different things like that, I want the fans to know, these are not always our feelings, okay? This is for y'all. We do this because we love you. Now, Mr. Taylor, you can present your first piece of evidence. I'm very ready. Once again, Mr. Doughboy ended his opening statement with saying as to why rap should not be canceled. I don't think I said rap should be canceled. I like rap. Hibbity hop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a couple of rap songs that helped me learn a bunch of stuff. I-N-D-E, I wouldn't know how to spell that word if it wasn't for Boosie. <laughs> You understand? So rap, rap, rap. That's a very interesting word, rap. What does rap mean? It means to talk, to exchange words. Then we changed it to hip hop because it was hip at the time, right? And it was what was happening. I don't know if that's real, but it sounds right. <laughs> sounds right and I feel it. The point is, I don't care about rap or hip hop in the sense of canceling it. Right? I care about rap and hip hop culture. Mr. Doughboy said that 
the stripping industry and it's completely cool. And I asked him, I yelled out. I should not have, but I did it because I was passionate. I felt it. I said, what about your daughter? You said your daughter's 17. <laughs> Brother, that's one year. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think you might feel a little bit differently when it comes to that. I'm talking about hip hop and rap culture, the culture that tells you that you gotta be a real nigga. You said that it's not rap and hip hop culture, it's street culture, but let me ask you, where is rap and hip hop at? Where does it come from? The streets! <laughs> You can't tell me that it's not rapping hip hop, it's the streets. Streets is rapping hip hop. It shouldn't be. Oh, it's a few. It's a couple that's different. I get it. You got your commons, your most depths, you know what I'm saying? Your Talib qualities. Ain't nobody twerking to that. <laughs> <laughs> not that nigga been shot. <laughs> to, there are times <laughs> when you need. Someone, I will be, that's never happened. Not now nigga been shot to that. <laughs> we talking about street rap and hip hop. That's the stuff that's killing us. The stuff that tell you to fuck everybody over. One of my favorite rap and hip hop people, Tupac. Did he not do Brenda's Got a Baby? Did he not tell us to keep our head up? Did he not also tell us, fuck your bitch? <laughs> Ain't the click you claim. <laughs> Do you know how evil that shit is? I get it. It's a lot of good rap out there that in, empowers us, that tells us to go out there and do a good thing. But for every one Brenda's got a baby, there's a bunch of bands that make her dance. And I'm gonna tell you right now, that's false. Cause a, 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 a bill will make her dance. Not a band, a dollar, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy J talking about some bands that make her dance. Nigga, you got four quarters? <laughs> you want your daughter dancing for four quarters? No, no objection, your honor, objection. Order. Objection. Mr. Ron T. <laughs> Keep I'm it. just saying, this is what he wants. <laughs> this ain't me, this what he wants. <laughs> we talking about rap culture, don't snitch. Nigga, what? <laughs> Where my shit at? <laughs> <laughs> Where my shit at? They stole, they stole my van. Oh, I ain't gonna tell for the street. Motherfuck the street! <laughs> Where's my shit? <laughs> Who you saving? <laughs> why I don't wanna tell? Nigga, why? <laughs> this nigga ain't did nothing for you. Rap culture, which will tell you that bitches ain't shit, but hoes and tricks. I met a bunch of bitches, and they more than hoes and tricks. <laughs> You don't try to put women in this little box. We ain't even talking about women, just bitches. I met some grass cutting bitches, some house painting bitches. I met a lot of them and they wasn't all holes and tricks, but rap would have you believe that you're supposed to just shoot everybody up. And this is the worst thing. This is one of the main reasons why we need to just cancel rap culture. Anything that applauds killing people, right? killing people and making songs about it and then you get money for it. God bless his soul, King Von. King Von, we love him. He was wonderful. With all due respect, it seems like he was not the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> Real shit. Real shit. You listen to all that stuff like slide, slide, slide. Do you realize like niggas died, died, died. They died. You brought up Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Nigga, that shit fiction. <laughs> Them made up peoples. It's real police reports about King Vaughn. They ain't here no more. What did he get? A record deal, fans, a gold chain. At what point are we gonna stop going, you know what? Murder, death, 
destruction, drugs, bitches and hoes. Yes, that's our culture. That is rap and hip hop culture. You name me the top rap and hip hop artists. Are they the commons of the world? Are they the most depths of the world? No, it, they're the little Wayne's, love them. Bitches and hoes. The Jay-Z's, love them. Bitches and hoes. Even Drake, a Jewish Canadian Nickelodeon child actor. <laughs> this motherfucker just put out an album with 21 Savage. Talking about all the many ways he will fuck your bitch. And I got one question, Aubrey, why not your bitch? <laughs> why you got to fuck mine? You got your pick of the litter, you wanna fuck with mine. But that's hip hop culture. I'm not satisfied with me, I'm not satisfied with what I got, I want yours. For as long as we promote that and reward that, we will forever be in this big clusterfuck of a bunch of fuck shit. But you go ahead, tell me about your daughter uh, dancing next hey, year. <laughs> Ron T did not come to fuck around. Cancel Court will be right back. Oh boy, go ahead and present your piece of evidence. Now, Mr. Ron here made some very, very key points, but I don't think he understand that he walked right into the trap that I already set for the nigga. He keeps talking about the end result. He's talking about rappers dying. He's talking about the culture of it, the selling of the drugs. If I'm not mistaken, in these neighborhoods that are already marginalized, for black people, there's already white people fucking up the system from day one, am I right? Back in Los Angeles, where there's not guns getting dumped off in the hood, where are we getting the guns from? Where are we getting, from, getting the drugs from? I don't know no nigga that own no boat going out getting just pounds from Poppy on the dock. You know what I'm saying? The drugs are being dumped into the neighborhood and you are blaming the people who are telling you about what's going on in the neighborhood. You're blaming it, a, a, a King Von, rest in peace. You're saying, oh, these rappers did this, this rapper did that. Not knowing that they're living in the projects just trying to survive. Where are the role models? The fathers are being taken out of the household. Is that the rapper's fault? Did the rapper come in and say, hey, daddy, get your ass out the house, nigga? No. <laughs> That never happened. Daddy wasn't there before the rapper started rapping, nigga. Like you start talking about, oh, you need to have, you know, more respect, you know, respect for the women. If the fathers ain't in the house is teaching young black men how to respect black women, of course they're gonna be out there acting a fool. And of course they're gonna be getting taken advantage of by big corporations that see, we can make some money off these niggas just rapping about their own demise. All right, now before we move any further, I wanna bring a key witness to the stage. Young man that I've known for a pretty long time, and he comes from a very hip-hop infused area, and I wanna talk to him about hip-hop and how it's impacted his life overall. So, with no further to do, I'd like to introduce to the witness stand, Lewis Bell. Lewis, can we get you to the, to the witness stand? What's up, Juan? What's up, Juan? Right up in here. Now, uh, Lewis, now you are from where? Where did you, where are you born and raised in? Oakland, Bay Area, man. City of dope, huh? Okay, yes, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> And how would you say hip hop has impacted your life overall? Like, do you listen to hip hop music? Of okay, course. and how would you say it's impacted your life? Like how you move around in these streets, how you are as a man, how would you say that hip hop has impacted you? I feel like hip hop always kept a, kept a nigga laced up with game all the time. You feel me? Sometimes growing up in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. you feel me, you hear your pops, your uncles, you feel me, they popping their peas, rhyming, talking they shit, swallowing shit. shit. You feel me? You okay. feel me? Yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. then you like, oh shit, that sound cool. And then you get in the car, and you hear Too Short, E-40, be legit. Come on. All these people saying the same shit you just heard in your house, mm -hmm. it just make you feel like you just the Mac of the year. You can Ooh. do it. You can Pop holler at any, <laughs> any female. Okay. You understand me? Go get any amount of dollar you want. Mm -hmm. It just give you that extra confidence, that extra boost you need, you feel me, when you leaving the house, man. See, and I'm glad that you touched on that 
with the females because the prosecution here would like to say that hip hop is misogynistic and that it objectifies women. But I would like to go by the mantra that good guys finish last. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're a good guy, you're gonna get your little heart broke. Now, when you like, when you listen to hip hop, does it make you go different when you talking to a female? Is your game a little bit more laced because they've been tying your shoes through the verses you've been hearing? Yes. Hip hop is more than music. It teaches a lot of people how to be an entrepreneur. Mm. You feel me? So okay. sometimes it matters what type of music you listen to. You can get influenced by whatever you want to get influenced by. Okay. So people like to blame hip hop, mm -hmm. but it might you might be listening to the wrong hip hop songs. Come on, the wrong shit. I'm glad that you said that. And I'm glad, and I'll, I'll say this before I toss it over for cross-examination. You said that you've been inspired by the entrepreneurial spirit of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? We've seen Rick Ross go off and venture off into Wingstop. We've seen uh, 50 Cent go off and become a TV executive. Now you're telling jokes. Mm -hmm. Now people know you as Lewis Bell. I see you got the merch on your shirt. Oh, yeah. Tell me about the game and the stuff that you adapted from seeing other rappers and how it's affected you mm -hmm. as a comedian and you don't even rap. Mm. How has that affected you in your hustle? That, that that matters for sure because like I said, coming from the Bay Area, we always been about independence since mm. day one. You feel me? That's why the Black Panthers about, you feel me? Uh, we gonna police our own neighborhood if Come they ain't on. doing it right. You feel me? <laughs> so and the last question before I get out of here. When you listen to hip hop music, has it ever made you wanna do bad, stupid shit? Or has it just made you wanna be the best Lewis Belt that you could possibly be in all fashions of the word? Hip hop make me wanna be the best Lewis Belt. Hip hop is just a playlist and a soundtrack that's just in my ear, but it's stuff that's already in my head that just make my head clear. You that's understand the isms, me? my man. That's the ism. You understand me? <laughs> no further yeah. questions. Your witness, Ron T. Your witness. Mr. Ron, you can cross examine the witness. Uh, Mr. Belt, he just asked you if hip hop ever made you want to do anything stupid. Uh, you said no. It makes you want to go out and do good things. Let me ask you what hip hop song made you want to go to school? Um. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that, look that song up. Um, uh, never heard about, that. What about, what about the uh, black ABCs? No, 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 no. Yeah. You don't ask questions. I ask you questions. My fault, my fault. You on the sand, okay? <laughs> it's pimping easy. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> but some it is and some it ain't, you feel me? It gotta be in you, not on you. You Come understand on. me? Okay. Let me ask you this, Mr. Belt. Have you ever pimped? No. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good answer, good answer. Hip hop told me not to snitch. <laughs> so, if you know that pimping is easy for some, not easy for others, knowing that pimping is illegal, where did you learn these illegal things, Mr. Belt? Was it hip hop that told you these illegal, illicit, misogynistic, devilistic shits? Brother man, <laughs> vagina been selling before cotton. <laughs> We don't learn that type of stuff from hip hop in the black community in the Bay Area. No. You just told me that pimping wasn't easy for certain people. I'm assuming that you learned that from hip hop, yet you are not a pimp. It sounds as if you are saying to me that rap, hip hop, let you know about pimping in a legal activity. Is that right? Judge, I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Please clarify what you said. What I said was, <laughs> it gotta be in you, not on you. It's easy for some and hard for others, Could right? You translate that. Um, <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> this game going over your head like yeah, a shower cap. Just... <laughs> Let me explain. Right. People did not learn pimping from hip hop. When we were slaves, somebody was selling something to get in that the house. <laughs> a lot of these motherfuckers mix because of that. So how does that correlate to rap culture? What I'm saying is rap culture ain't the reason why these hoes hoeing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Women been prostitutes before rap came out. I guess, Mr. Belt, what I'm trying to get at is that if 
this genre of music, what we call rap and hip hop, had not uh, propagated such activities, perhaps you would not know about it. People have been doing drugs since drugs been doing drugs. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, but then you get <laughs> Pfizer, right? Then you get oxycodone. Then you get different things who get to sell these products and show us and tell us that these things ain't bad for us, yet we know that they are. Once again, you said rap and hip hop has done nothing bad for you, but it makes you want to get money. What song made you want to go work at Kinko's? <laughs> like I said. What song? <laughs> oh, Jackson, he's badgering my witness. Made you want to go get a job, nigga. I ain't talking about selling dope. I ain't talking about pimping hoes. What song made you want to go get your resume, hip, put it in that manila folder with your stupid ass tie on and go, are you all hiring? Who did that? What Snoop Dogg album did that? Like Doughboy said, it shows motherfuckers how to be entrepreneurs. So because of hip hop, that's why I have my own brand. Do too much, ENT. And you pay your taxes on that? Yes. Okay. And we'll hip hop that. told me that. They told me pay your taxes. <laughs> I'd like to see the paperwork. Thank you, Mr. Lewis Belt. I'm glad for uh, y'all having a real P. <laughs> Don't move. Cancel Court will be right back. The most prominent black man in the world. He profited from Jesus Christ. Let's not forget how he got on. Jesus walks. He walked. And he had that song playing in the clubs making young ladies all over the country shake that monkey to Jesus Walks? A black card being revoked? This motherfucker's Christian card should be revoked. Your Honor, I, I object, I object. The prosecution has no proof that people were popping their pussies when uh, Jesus Walks came on. Mr. Doughboy, thank you for that interesting witness. You had a very interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Mr. Ronti, do you have anything you would like to respond to that? Yeah, I find it very interesting that he uh, brought a criminal up here. I object. <laughs> Lewis isn't a criminal. That is hearsay, Mr. Taylor. That will be stricken <laughs> from the record, jury. He's a player, a well, player. I mean, he called himself a player. I don't know what profession that is unless you in the league, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. I like what you did. I understand where you're going. Mr. Belt brought up prostitution. It's been going on. But listen to what we're talking about. We're talking about selling sex. Like that's, like that's normal. Like that's regular. Is it okay? Sure, fine. Should it be promoted? I think not. I think not. I don't think that as a people, particularly black people, black and brown people, that we should be promoting the way that we talk about women in our rap music. We call them bitches, we call them hoes, we have them dance all over poles. That's a rap. That's a bar. That's a bar. That's a bar. Have them dance around and gallivating and doing all these weird things, which I personally feel has warped our ideas of what beauty truly is. It's as if you can't see a young woman just being normal, just a nice classic sense of femininity. Now we got to have the long this, the long that, the fat these, and all of that. <laughs> Just for us to believe that a woman is attractive, and I'm not saying that that's not attractive, but that is not the standard. What happens is when you move the standard, right, and you put it into an awkward position, now you have everything else being run amok. I'd like to bring two witnesses, if you will, who would exhibit, right, just some ideas of what we might now feel is the stereotypical beauty of rap and hip hop. So could I get those two people to come in here, please? 
Is this Young exhibit man. A and exhibit B? This is exhibit A and exhibit one. Because <laughs> we ain't got no losers. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as you all can see, these women are beautiful. Brother Doughboy, would you agree? Yes. That yes. these women are beautiful? No objections on this one. No objections. Absolutely. Now, you see, under these matching robes that they have, <laughs> they have some absolutely official and necessary for the courtroom examples of what is explained and displayed in rap and hip hop. Exhibit A and Exhibit 1. If you all could please reveal what we now put in rap and hip hop music as to be the standard of beauty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do I need to say more? What is this? Is this necessary? Is this necessary? Exhibit A. Now, do you feel comfortable in that? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all really fucking my shit up right now. <laughs> All right. Y'all was supposed to come here and be queens on some Oprah shit. When I called y'all, I didn't know y'all was built like that. <laughs> My God, what the fuck? Put your coat back on, please. Put your coat back on, please. Look, don't worry about all this. <laughs> Back to the matter is, is they find this shit? Yeah. yeah. But we ain't got to hear about them bouncing on the floor. Do I want them to do that? Absolutely. But that shouldn't be directed to them. Brother Doughboy, next year, this your daughter, which one? Keep my daughter out of this shit, y'all, before I shoot this nigga. <laughs> which order. one? <laughs> order, order, order. Mr. Taylor, leave his daughter out of this. Clearly this not, did not go in the way I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> I, I don't think I realized how beautiful women was. Right now, I feel like I'm about to release a mixtape in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like all of this shit to be stricken from the record right now. <laughs> Cause I'm definitely like, uh, my lord. Okay, the point is, look, I thank you all for coming in. Y'all, y'all, y'all can go. That was it. I don't need, I don't need no cross examination or nothing like that. Thank you, baby. Miss Lucy, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Taylor. I have a question. I don't got that. no answer, because that fucks me up. We will begin with opening I think, statements, I, th Mr. I think I'll take it all back. If, what, if, <laughs> I've been a lawyer for 22 years. If one year of rap can get me that, uh, <laughs> cash money taking over for the 99 and the 2000. Come over on this side, man. Come over on this side. Mr. Doughboy, yes. you saw the two exhibits, I did. the evidence yeah. that he presented. Could you talk about the two young ladies said they were fine with it? Mm -hmm. From your perspective, could it be that they embrace their femininity? No, my, my perspective on that is, you know, once again, Ron is proving my point for me. Your Honor, he wants to blame the rappers for every fucking thing that he can. The ladies are in here, they're video vixens. They're in the, vi the rap music videos. They date the rappers. They listen to the rappers. Everybody likes rappers and, and rap music except for this funny looking guy. <laughs> he knows it, that's why he's mad. He himself even started looking at him like, what the fuck am I talking about? These are beautiful fucking women. We like the music, we like the beautiful women that come across with it. We like listening to this shit. And another point that I wanna make, I'm a 43 year old man, Your Honor, yes, 43. No criminal record. You know why I have no criminal record? Because I listen to gangster rap music in the mirror and I throw up gang signs in the privacy of my own home. And I think everyone should. It allows me to live the gangster experience. I don't have to shoot anybody. It's a fun thing. So I think that this guy should get in on the action and stop trying to fuck it up for everyone else. Lakeith Stanfield, who's an actor, says you cannot support gangster rap and be pro-black. Do you agree with that? I do not. Why is that? Because gangster rap is a form of entertainment. We have got to stop living such literal lines. This is the voice of the community. If the communities weren't so fucked up, the raps wouldn't be so fucked up. If everything was roses and bubbles, niggas would be rapping about roses and bubbles. But it ain't. It's real shit going on. So you can be pro-black and like gangster rap. But do you believe that rappers promote stupidity? Yes or no? I plead the fifth on that one, sir. I plead the fifth. <laughs> do you think that most rappers die broke? I do, and you know why? Why? Because the corporations at the top taking all the money, taking advantage of the rappers. So he does have a point. There are some things that need to change about rap and rap culture, but it ain't the shit that he's talking about. So the rappers in rap culture are making a choice to rap this stuff 
to glorify this in their own communities. They're choosing to do this. They are. So you don't see that that's a problem. No, I think the problem is that the communities need to get fixed. And the process of osmosis, they will start to rap about better things. If the community is better, they will rap about it. Am I right, Jerry? But but there are a lot of educated people. Do you in remember the when hip hop first started, sir? It was what was it? Hip hop, a hip it a hip it a hip hop, a rock and a don't stop, a rock to the bang bang, boogie to up to, to boogie to the bang bang, boogie to be. That doesn't sound fucking gangster. Nobody got shot when that shit came you on. You right, motherfucker. No hippity hop niggas got shot. <laughs> <laughs> when everybody starts rapping about shooty shooty, everybody got because shot. Because the streets changed after that. The streets were peaceful back it then. It ain't got nothing to do with the streets. Streets been alive since do you as remember, long as concrete you, came out, nigga. Do, Nobody was Do you remember shot. when hip hop came out, the golden era, the fat boys, whoever watched Disorderlies, make some noise. You, you young motherfuckers ain't never watched <laughs> goddamn disorderlies. It was hilarious. You see what I'm saying? And people don't understand how important hip hop culture is to the ecosystem of the world. It's now influencing fashion, a bunch of different shit. It's not just music. So last question, you don't think there can be any balance since that's all we hear is violence and killing and Percocets and doing drugs and wearing jewelry. So where, there's no balance at all. There does need to be better balance and that needs to start from the top and the artists need to start flexing more ownership to own their music so they can rap about the shit they want to put out and not be forced by a bigger conglomerate to put out the shit that they want to put Thank out. Thank you, Mr. Doughboy. Don't bust that nut yet. Cancel Court will be right back. Share it with your granny on Facebook. Share it with the woke mob on Twitter. Share it with your Instagram crush. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate all your support. At this time, we will close with closing arguments. You have two minutes. Mr. Ronti, please present your closing argument. Okay. Well. Mr. Doughboy, I want to uh, uh, thank you for that uh, uh, crock of shit you just gave. <laughs> uh, in short, you just explained how these hip hop people are not at fault for the streets. Absolutely true. But they don't need to promote what's going on in the streets. When you're rewarded for promoting these different things, oftentimes we'll hear, well, these rappers, they're just talking about a reflection of their environment. Okay, I take a shit. That don't mean I do it in the street. <laughs> Everything that happens don't need what? to be reflected to the world. I understand bad things go on. That don't mean that you rap about it to a nice beat to young kids. Now, this idea of influencing the youth to go out and buy shoes and, and, and have nice hats and houses and all that shit. Yeah, all that happens. But we also get, we also get a Juice World. Remember Juice World, wonderful artist, who straight up said, I started doing drugs from listening to Future. Are you hip to uh, Juice World's newest project? No, you're not. He died. He died in the small, just a small sliver of time. He listened to Future, started doing drugs, started doing music, and died. Very small amount of time. Did Futures go, I ain't rapping about that no more. No. He went out and said, Percocet. Molly Percocet. Love oh, Jackson, that song's five years old. He still sang it. <laughs> Overruled. Overruled. And that is the point. Ladies and gentlemen, I get it. We all like having fun. We all like seeing Exhibit A and Exhibit 1 up here. Big, thick, than a motherfucker. <laughs> we get it. Look like the Bailiff Cousins. We get it. <laughs> I understand that. But once again, I'm not trying to cancel rap. We're talking about rap culture. We don't talk about the fact that there are these standards of beauty that a lot of our young girls try to get that they can't afford to get, that they do some deplorable things to attain. This is all a part of rap culture. And the biggest thing in the world is simply this, rap, hip hop. That's a genre of what? Of music. Music big than a motherfucker. It's a lot of music. There's country, there's jazz, there's Christian, there's pop. How many of them 
been killed for the shit they rap about. When the last time you seen Donna Summers getting hit <laughs> with a disco ball? It don't happen. This the only genre of music where niggas die from what they talking about. I ain't seen no Western motherfucker get hit by a deer in a pickup truck. <laughs> and if it did happen, there'd be a legend. But it happened to us every day. P&B Rock, Pop Smoke, Young Dolph, Takeoff, God rest his soul. Why is it that this culture of music tells each other that everything that's good, fuck that. <laughs> Don't do that. Do the wrong stuff. And that's okay? That's all right. You called me a funny looking nigga a few times. <laughs> you know how many women I hit? <laughs> no, <None>, nigga. <laughs> You know how many women all these cute niggas hit? A lot. I'm not trying to throw them under the bus. Chris Brown, he a cute ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> At what point are we gonna stop acting as if the same influence that we have on youth, on people that enjoy and listen to our things, that influence, it don't change when it comes to the bad stuff. So now at this point, let's just do a simple measurement. When we start talking about hip hop, how much of it is truly enlightening and telling people to love each other versus the amount that's telling people to kill each other, fuck each other's man, fuck that nigga, you don't need no money, fuck that bitch, you a stink ass hoe, <laughs> right? They both equally as influential. Which one do we have more of? Again, What's the last common song you listen to, nigga? <laughs> right? But you heard that new Drake in 21, what's this? 21 what? Savage. Savage! <laughs> Not 21 Christian. <laughs> Not 21 Saint. <laughs> 21 Savage. There's more of the savage music than there is the uplifting music. For, so for that reason and that reason alone, I say we need to cancel rap culture until further notice. Rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Ron, too. You have two minutes, Mr. Doughboy. Please That's begin with I your need, closing. That's all I sir. I've used that two minutes to my advantage many times in my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, in closing, Ron would like you to believe that rappers are the only people getting killed in these streets. In Los Angeles, you reference PNB, rest in peace, terrible situation. Hate that that happened, you know what I'm saying? Pop smoke, terrible, so rest in peace. Hate that these happened. But do you guys understand in Los Angeles, they've been robbing every fucking body? Do you understand that the police said, don't come out here, it's like the purge? Do you know how fucked up your city gotta be when the police chief say, nigga, don't visit here? That's what the police chief says. So once again, it's not the culture, it's the community. And until that changes, the words will never change. That the, the thought process can never change because that's still what's going on. Unless we change the minds of what's going on with the people, and that's what I believe. I believe with hip hop, you gotta look at hip hop that even though a lot of these rappers were dealt impossible hands, Jay-Z, what was the famous words that he said? Like I told you, sell drugs. No, Hove did that. So hopefully you don't have to go through that. That was coming from a man who in his 20s was selling drugs and shot his brother in the fucking arm. He's now one of the wealthiest men on the planet. How did that happen? Hip hop culture, Juan T. When you look at somebody like Rick Ross, I get it, he was a correctional officer. He was doing all these other things in his past life, drug dealer, whatever he may have come from. Man owns several different franchises. Dr. Dre, the man who made the song Fuck the Police to talk about marginalized, how police were doing brutality in the hood. He made Fuck the Police. We seen him on the Super Bowl this year. How did he get there, Ron Taylor? Hip hop culture. It can take you to the highest of heights. They're talking about the things that they went through and then you see that their, their subject matter starts to change. Look at Jay-Z, when you see him on Reasonable Doubt, what was he talking about? You know, they repo your Vega code a couple of weeks ago. Shit was all good. About to start snitching, ain't you? About to start bitching, ain't you? What was he talking about on 444? 
He was talking about being a married man and dealing with trauma from his life. So we can grow and evolve if you give us a fucking chance, Mr. Taylor. That's all I'm saying today. I'm not, I'm not going against the fact that there is a bunch of bullshit music out there that promotes a bunch of bullshit and destruction in the black community. I'm just saying before we put the carriage in front of the horse, let's fix the fucking community, amen? That's all I wanna say. And the real problem is the community and rap culture can't change until that in itself changes. I rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Doughboy. <laughs> Rap culture made Jay-Z cheat on Beyonce. I'm just putting that out there. You cheat on the queen, nigga? That's what y'all like? Thank you, Mr. Ron T. At this time, it is up to the jury to make a decision. All those in favor of canceling rap culture until further notice, please raise your right hand and say aye. Raise your, raise your hand higher. All those in favor of not canceling rap culture, please raise your right hand and say nay. A judgment has been rendered. It is here by the power of cancel court that rap culture has been officially canceled and suspended until further notice. That is the order. Court is adjourned. Well, hey, man. At least you get to live, dog. <laughs> You should get to live. I think that was a success. You know, we got rap culture canceled, which is very necessary. I mean, hey, do you want to die, Nick? This is wrong, but I can't convince the judge and the jury, but I got y'all. Hop in them comments and jump on your boy's side. Or this is an attack on hip hop that they're never gonna let go away. I mean, though, boy, it was cool. It was good. At the end of the day, some shit is just an open and closed case, man. Hip hop is not bad. It is positive. It empowers us to do better. It lets us know that sky is the limit and we can do whatever we wanna do. If you like rap, then you got to understand that we need rap culture to be canceled right now because this ain't sustainable. They listen to Ron, the funny looking nigga with the afro and his quick witty one-liners and punchlines, so they made the wrong decision. I hope Brother Doughboy ain't out there trying to keep the rap culture alive, at least not the rap culture right now alive because it might end up in his demise. So if you want my honest opinion, it's some bullshit, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be hard to listen to rappers when there ain't none because they all been killed because of the shit that they talk about. How much you gonna try to defend just treachery? I have gangster rap in my car and I have a turkey sandwich in my briefcase. Good day, sir. Good day. <laughs>